it all happened like I knew it would. A single drop of sauce. Flies to honey. The monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead, I became part of their story. Still a bit groggy, are we? Don't worry. The sedative will wear off soon enough. Easy now. No need to hurry. Get your bearings and report to me upstairs. Here I was, hoping my upstairs visitor was just playing tricks on me. Rubbish. Who are you? Nobody. sheep. Did you expect a needle? Shaking her fluffy coat, the sheep eyes you balefully, her rectangular eyes like letterboxes to the void. With one sharp hoof, she kicks you right in the shin.
Did you expect a needle? again.
Well, I should have known there'd be trouble. I'm not one to let sleeping dogs lie. prisoner's eyes meet yours. He speaks not with gratitude, but with gleeful malevolence. Ah, oh, freedom! Tastes better than wine. And I can set you free in return. Say your prayers while you've breath to speak them, lass. The halls await. I've only just woken up, and already there's a bounty on my head.
Empty. problem. Junk. I'm back where I started. Hmm. Nowhere to go but up.
junk. Take him into this room. Was he already here? Why, you're looking a bit more chipper. Yes. Looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. There you are. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. Is he? Oh well. Some problems simply sort themselves, don't they? She frowns and peers at you closely, resting the back of one hand on your forehead and taking your pulse with the other. Hmm. Delusions such as these are rare but not unheard of. I recommend a cup of mulled wine and another night's sleep. Just take it easy. No. You're alive, and you're having a conversation. You are on a ship, of course, but luckily for us both, we're merely sailing the plain old sea. Index fingers pressed to her lips, she pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. A new life awaits, and if you're a particularly good girl, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. Oh, do go on. I won't hold it against you. <laughs> Promise. My, aren't we a meek little lamb? Perhaps I needn't have collared you at all. Though it does look darling on you. So let's just leave it on, shall we? Because to answer your question, what this collar does is this. It makes you unable to cast Source. 
For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. Murder here. A young magister stands pale and silent. Her knuckles whiten around her weapon as you pass. Behind the magister, a bloodied mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. There's been a murder. A sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. It's a small ship. His name was Finn, oddball. Looked to me like he saw something he wished he hadn't before he came here. We'll find out who did it, one way or another. It seems as though there's a pattern in the blood flow. That can't be natural. Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. <laughs> Finn didn't see it like that. He was desperate for us to help him. Two things scared the living daylights out of him. His own shadow and his own source. We'll find out who did this. Speaking of... She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Finn was killed by Sauce. If a Magister could do that, there wouldn't be a Magister. It looks more like a passenger managed to slip their collar. And the rest, well, you see the evidence in front of you. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. 
Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? <laughs> Not in here, it isn't. You let me know if you hear anything. Whoever did this is dangerous. I need to find another way. by a void woken. Forget it. Name? Well, you aren't here on my list. Scram, eh? We're trying to catch a killer here. Like I said, you aren't on the list. I know you. I heard you sing once. Before. Out there. Wow. Wow. You look cool. I like your hair. I like your eyes. I like your colour. I have one too. I'll give you that. I know who you are. You're a singer. My mum likes you. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? You think me mad? Mad? No. Insufferable? Surely. What are you trying to hear anyway? I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. Creep with those bubbles trying on. Never thought you'd end up a prison guard, Vic. That way. I always knew you'd turn out rotten and bend nest. Your kind always hung closest to the the all the mobs around a campfire. Well, you've got this wolf on a leash now. Soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of this ship with it. Put a knuckle in it. I'm trying to concentrate. They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. One of us wouldn't kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. Well, well. What have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. Hmm. There's some discoloration, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? 
it. Oh, goodness, no. And don't even mention the demon's testes that are turnips. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave? In short, uh, tailor? Oh, but to feel the caress of satin on my scarlet skin once more. A most satisfactory answer indeed. On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. The very basics, then. I suppose that's a start. So, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? As per your own testimony, you can tailor and groom, but you have the taste buds of a dung beetle. Still, beggars can't be choosers. So without further ado, I offer you my sincerest congratulations. As of now, you are my slave. Of course you accept. Mine wasn't an offer, it was an order. Anyway, you may leave me for a moment. We'll go over your duties once we reach Fort Joy. Now shoo! Well, you've got this wolf on a leash now. I spent my life singing for my slaves to bring me my supper. Finer fare than boiled roots and rotten tubers, too. Meanwhile, the Magisters feast on honeyed meat behind this very wall. <gasps> the indignity. They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, ghetto. You hear that? You've got this wolf on a leash now. As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of this ship with him. His eyes snap open. He looks at you and frowns. Murder! Ah, that's what they were going on and on about. I wouldn't know anything about it. I kill a man. He knows who done it. His daddy knows who done it. And the mayor knows who done it, too. His eyes flutter shut, and he assumes his position of repose once more. Whether they catch me is another matter, but I ain't one to hide my accomplishments. The ship, of course. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And? Well, you've got this wolf on a leash now. Sick as a leper's cat! From the state of it, I'd say she's being cared for by a bunch of beardless babes who never loved anyone but their own mums. But there's more. Listen close. There now, just like that. Squeak. I've seen more appetizing things. His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back. The other catches you before you lose your footing. There. You heard it, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, ghetto. Good news. No, you beautiful idiot. That wasn't any rat. It was the wheel. Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. Pardon my beard. That means... If we'd been traveling for, yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. 
place hung closest to Elf Divine, my wolves are under campfire. Well, you got this wolf on the Yeah, no indeed, Gero. But that ain't my final destination. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank ye kindly, Gero. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. You one of them? A Divine Order loyal? They killed a sorcerer, you know. They'll hide the evidence well enough, but make no mistake. That light. I always knew you'd turn up, Drox and Ben Mesley. But your kind always hung closest to Elf Divine, like wolves around a campfire. Well, you've got this wolf on a leash now. As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hand you right over the side of this ship with him. things coming out of plague-stricken pigs. There's... there's nothing else I can make, Your Majesty. Turnips and water are all I was given. Unacceptable. I've never dined on anything less than a dozen course dinner, and I don't intend to do away with the custom. Well, uh, there has been a murder... I didn't yes. do nothing, okay? It was one of them. One of your people. Human. You get saucy with me when you clearly don't know the first thing about sauce. It was one of them. I know it. Would you put a knuckle in it? I'm trying to concentrate. They don't care about us. A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face, he stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board, and I'd bet three months' pay it's this tramp you found. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Pinches less that way, right? Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifa. And now, you. We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Standing far back from Ifa, the tight-faced magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion but says nothing. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is somebody gave him a bigger sword and now he's Johnny Big Pants. Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from interested parties. No. The dead man, Finn, is it? I'd no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. The joy, I've heard a lot. Nothing good. No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Wonder if we'll get to meet the ringmaster himself. He's in now. 
I might think the same, but Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. What are you conspiring about over there? You? What's your name? Oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. And that bee is me. Name! Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. Away with you, at once. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips as he leans back against the wall. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep trying to One of us would kill our own. An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. Rolling dice? Deciding fates. She eyes you quite seriously. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it, too. I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? She gives your arm a vigorous stroke of the tongue. Efficient, like a cat grooming. Hmm. You were in a cellar with other sorcerers, a dark, dank place. I remember it well. As everyone lay sleeping, you sat in the dark with wakeful eyes, looking rather lovingly at <laughs> me. <laughs> My, aren't you a pretty cup full of sugar and spice? She pats you on the shoulder consolingly. There, there, don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. I don't lick and tell. It was one of them. I know it. Don't worry, honey. It isn't yours. She looks you up and down with the merest tint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though. One of us wouldn't kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you? The woman you keeps rolling her dice. She pays you. You think me mad? Mad? <laughs> what are you trying to hear anyway? I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. on anything less than a dozen course dinner, and I don't intend to do away with the custom. Well, uh, there has been a murder, Your Majesty. The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out and takes your hand, turning it this way and that, examining it from every angle. Finally, he pinches your skin, gently tugging at it. Fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. Tell me, what do you know of your... Our world's history. Ask what you must. I've nothing to hide. Seems 
Most unusual. And if it's not too rude to suggest, not much of an answer. No. I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? Of course you don't have any useful information. Why did I expect anything else? Now please, run along. I have a world to decipher. No amount of pestering will get the elf to take his eyes off his book or respond to your questions. Never thought you'd end up a prisoner. You're the register, ma'am. Good, good. Magister Williams has just about done with the last passenger. You faring okay so far? He tugs the collar of his uniform and chuckles. I'm sorry you're upset, ma'am, but we all wear what we wear for a reason. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. He's coming out of play right on her. And if she tries to run, shoot to kill. There's nothing else I can do. You seem on edge, officer. What on earth is the matter? Murder most foul. I strongly suspect you know all about it. Do you? Well, perhaps you're absolutely right. There has been a murder, Your Majesty. Maybe that has the Magister's more concern than more appetite. Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous-looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. Good God! The woman's mad! You there, sorcerer, go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. I'm just about to create a scene. Subdue her, men, quickly! If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely.
motionless, curled on the ground like an animal. Under his shaggy hair, you can see green eyes fluttering as if in a nightmare. A low whine escapes his lips. His eyes flicker open, but he doesn't register your presence at all. Lucille. Ivan cries out, then his eyes fall closed again. No matter how much you shake him now, he cannot be roused. The dwarf lies in a heap on the floor, his great beard twisted and tangled around him. He is stock still. You can't see if he's living or dead. You hear a faint thud, thud, thud. He's alive, but only just. is blocked. I'll need to find another way. No, not the final dark. Not yet. It's no use. Your words do not seem to reach her. The dice roll darkly. They're rolling for me. lies in a heap on the floor. Oh. What? What happened? Must have been the turnips. Water? Wine, for goodness sake! Oh. The lizard's eyes close as he slips into unconsciousness.
long before this thing snaps into splinters. Damn, that doesn't bode well. Onwards and upwards. pass through the door and are suddenly face to face with an undead. His skull is bizarrely angular and a glorious jewel sits in the middle of his forehead. The skeleton is quickly leafing through a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia, muttering to himself. No, no, no! What damn fools record knowledge on a pulped tree? It catches fire, it turns into must when wet, it cannot even resist acid! No wonder they're so bloody ignorant. The skeleton looks up and notices you for the first time. Oh, it's you. Shouldn't you be running and screaming or some such? The skeleton groans and looks back to his book, frantically flipping from page to page. Yes, indeed. It's the look of someone that wants to read the bloody book he's holding. Now, if you're really quite finished, I believe you have lifeboats to flee to.
please. I was no more an elf than you are those rags you're wearing. I had a mask, rather ingeniously designed, which allowed me to take that primitive form. A mask that was stolen by that damned witch after her little scene. Still, she'll drown with the rest of these fools, and I will simply pluck my mask from her cold, dead hands. The skeleton holds up his book in one quick, frustrated movement. I am trying to discover if there is anyone worth saving. And I will be damned if I let the lives of some mayflies get in my way. Go on, go. Swim or drown or do whatever takes your fancy. I have a book to read. was painted recently, judging from its pungent scent. You don't recognize the symbol, but it's clearly warning you away. You press your palm against the door to open it. The wood feels neither cold nor warm, but simply gray. The color drains from your hand, and you are left numb. It doesn't budge. The door groans open, but an ashen shadow clouds your mind. My time is short, although yours, I gather, is infinitely shorter.
children and dwarfs first, just like the old stories say. The dwarf yanks at one of the nearby ropes to no avail. You said there were other people down there. We, we need to help them. You see those pentacles, kid? It's time for getting the hell out of here. The Magister lies on the floor, unconscious and bleeding from a dire-looking wound. games begin. Let's head above decks for some air. Let's not tarry. This old tub is about to burn.
something. It's... it's Magister Siwan, the one who put on this damn collar. Sounds like she needs help. but can only gape as she clutches her neck, trying to stem the bleeding of a gushing wound. With jagged movements, she raises her clenched fist and holds out a length of cloth, soaked with some kind of strong-smelling tincture. Blood quickly soaks through the cloth. Magister C. One's mouth opens and closes, her eyes wide in terror. It's working. The pressure is stemming the flow of blood. C1 clutches your arm, her eyes locked with yours. Something within the ship snaps. The floorboards shudder. C1 struggles to her feet, clinging to you tightly. The ship lets out a deep groan, then cracks. Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity, High Judge Orivan. The order's right about one thing. First comes Source, then comes Void Woken. Am I the lone survivor? Well, thanks, disembodied voice. Rackus Rex. Who's that again? Hmm, nice throne at least. Garbage. The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin, the crown of his head. He spots you, and his arms snap to his sides. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers.
Hi, Losa. I'm Tam. Are you a sorcerer too? The child screws up his face and looks at you hard. He lifts his mirror up to his nose, closes one eye, and looks at himself again. I don't see any sauce on you or me. I guess they're wrong or crazy. No one cares where I go. They know I can't leave the island. It's nicer out here than inside anyway. They're gone now. The Magisters took them already. I guess now they're cured. And maybe they're waiting for me back at home. But you didn't die. I guess I am. But it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere isn't scary. There isn't anywhere safer, that's what I mean. You'll see. Void Woken. Those are the same beasts that sank our ship. Damn, they made it to shore. I thought these bloody collars were supposed to keep those things at bay. That's Magister Jalen. He wasn't so bad on the ship, at least. Poor fella.
The squirrel looks at you in shock. Are you sure you want to chase him away? The squirrel turns his nose up at you and turns away. But his cat seems more than happy to tag along, dragging its owner with it. You spot a strange lizard gazing over the water with a steady, malcontent stare. His skin is of a bright, blood-red color. Could he be...? Yes, you recognize him from the ship. It would seem you're not the only one who survived the tentacles of the deep. The lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer, or a duelist. You lock eyes with his, two smoldering embers that sizzle your very soul. I did survive, yes. And chances are I wouldn't have, had you not returned to the aid of your fellow passengers down in that dreadful hold. You have my gratitude. Hand over heart, he salutes you with a bob of the head. More than a nod, though less than a bow. Yes, I'm sure you've all the makings of a hero and all that, but let's not get carried away, shall we? Nevertheless, one good turn does deserve another, so as far as the whole slave business is concerned, let's just forget about it. You may as well have your freedom. Now then, if there's nothing further... If you really must know, I haven't quite decided yet. I have a frightful amount of things on my mind, hence my standing here contemplating the waves. He sighs dramatically. Tell me. What do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? A consciousness. Very good. And the water it may drown in. Life and death. Why not? He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tranquil moments pass as the waves lap against your thoughts. As for myself, when I consider this vast expanse before us, I see an empire. I see continents dotted with mighty cities, and shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. Lost. What do you mean, what do I mean? I mean just what I say. I had a very actual empire that I lost. Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended, he stares at you with utter incredulity. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. Or do you really mean to tell me you don't know who I am?
Oh, may the Seven have mercy on their own creation. I am the Red Prince, the All-Conqueror, the World Tamer, the Spouse of the Sun. Of course you know me. There's a brief moment's pause, during which his grandiloquent pose deflates ever so slightly. That said, I suppose I must own up to the fact that I find myself rather in between all-conquering and world-taming opportunities at the moment. The grandeur that is my fate has uh, hit a bit of a snag. But never you worry. For the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. Truly, a kind offer indeed. And you've already proven to be trustworthy enough. You came back for the others on that ship after all. Fine, I accept. On one condition, for reasons I'll not disclose right now, it is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer, one of the mystics of my kind. I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island. Promise me we'll look for him, and I'll extend you the blessing of my company. Jolly good. So, now that that's settled, first things first. Even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself. But I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic, and yes, even subterfuge. What say you? Do, do not take my elegance as a mask for frailty. My blows shatter shields, and my thrusts pierce armor. If a warrior you need, the warrior you'll have. I offered the perfection of the blade, and you seek the perfection of the blade. How fortuitous. Very well. Onwards, then, to victory or death. The Red Prince nods and gives you a smile that wavers ever so delicately between courtesy and contempt. Now, as you're away, you'll be travelling with a prince. Proper forms of address include your majesty, your royal highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go. So, without further ado, let us be off!
like cats. Hey, kitty. Hey, kitty, kitty. The cat's eyes are clouded and grey, but it stares at you with acute intensity. Its eyes clear, and it shakes its head, confused. to hear than that stinking boat, huh? I'm sure glad you went back to save the others. Saw one of them ringing out their tunic at the shore a few hours ago. Say hi for me. Hasn't changed a bit. Always late. I'm looking for an inmate. He wears a large bronze ring with a dragon stamped into it. Name of Migo. Have you seen him? Useless. It is a very important matter that I locate this Migo. Tell me if you hear mention of him. Child, I find myself in your so-called divine lands, yet I feel his absence deep in my heart all the same. <laughs> he may feel like an inmate here. But you and your captors are the same stuff, in race and customs, if not heart. You'll see what a difference that can make. Looky, looky here, mates. A fresh face. We love fresh faces, don't we? <laughs> oh, yes, we do. Why don't you join us in a round of cards? First hands on the house. <laughs> Chuff to you, Chief. Here are your cards. You're up first. You glance at your hand. Two purple monarchs. A hard hand to beat. Quite the hand, Freshy. Unfortunately, two is less than five, and that's how many purples I've got. I reckon that makes me the winner. I'll be having your fee, then. Blaming a bloke you just met for your misfortune, are ya? Ease off, or I'll go ahead and double what you owe. Mm. 
With pleasure.
It's too... it's too tight. The woman is scrabbling at her throat, as though she can hardly breathe. make it tighter. It won't budge. I can't breathe. I can't. What are you doing? It's this collar. Don't you understand? I can't. I can't breathe. Will source change back? What if there are no sources? Why hasn't Alexander risen yet? You! You there! You, you've just arrived, isn't that right? Are you... Are you quite alone? It's just, I've a proposition. Something, something very worth knowing. But it's hardly a group affair. I only need one. Oh, noble. But after the magistrates take you all, your nobility will have been for nothing. Good luck with your friends, though. Enjoy your last days in good company, won't you? It's time to accept reality. Fara, she ain't coming back. Irma, where are you, darling? She's gone, Farah. Gone! Where is he? Farah, she ain't coming back. She's gone, Farah. Gone. She's gone, Farah. Gone! Time to accept reality. I am a proud lawyer to the order. I would not plead on subverting our cause. Please. Irma. Irma. Need I Pipe down, Fora. It's time to accept reality. He hasn't changed a bit. Always late. Farah, she ain't coming back. Please. 
Your god will stay back, sorcerer, and stay silent. Our god Wogan speaks. We know you've been helping sorcerers escape, Atusa. We have proof. I'd sooner cut my tongue out than lie to you, Alexander. I know nothing of any escapees. If you can tell the Godwoken no more, your tongue is of no use. Cut it out. This can't be serious, Alexander. Come! You should know by now to obey your superior, Magister. Whatever she may ask. Stay silent, you! Atusa pinches the tip of her tongue with two fingers and brings her dagger to its root. Her eyes squeeze shut. Drops of blood form against the dagger's edge and quickly fall to the ground. She groans. Stop! My father, may his soul rest in peace, would be disappointed in you, Atusa. To think you would lie to his only son, your bishop, and your friend these many years. The fate of our realm hangs in the balance. If you will not help us save it, then you will help the Void destroy it. Dallas? Yes, Your Holiness. I believe we're done here. What a waste. Will be needed elsewhere. Don't you hear? Come on, then, Lexi. The Lizard Magister, or what's left of her, lies in a puddle of gore. Your grift teaches you to bully others. She was a lizard, yet a magister. No matter her reasons, her penalty was fair. Bishop Alexander and the Hammer herself. They, they were so close, almost within arm's reach. You don't know them? Oh, remarkable. Bishop Alexander is the son of the Divine, the leader of the Divine Order. And Dallas, the hammer, is his right hand. They are all that stand between you, me, and the void. And they were right here just a moment ago, attending to some business. Then you prove yourself ignorant, miss. The Void Woken are drawn to source. With these colours on, no source can flow from us. We're safer here than anywhere in Rivalon. <laughs> you can thank the Divine Order for that. Your grift teaches you to bully others. Pathetic. You keep his name out of your mouth, you filthy cod chewer. <laughs> Have your cud. Disgusting, just like all your kind. Disgusting like theft. Disgusting like threats. This is not your business, Long Pig. Don't let this moss muncher talk to you like that. 
Especially a cheap skate like this one. Griff already knows she don't like to pay her fair share. An intense looking man steps between the thug and the elf and rolls up his sleeves, revealing well muscled and heavily scarred arms. You recognize him. It's Ifan, who you met aboard the ship on the way here. Just stand aside, won't you, mate? This is no business of yours. Lone wolves decide their own business. The thug freezes in fear for a moment before shuffling back to the protection of his crony. Pay up, elf. No one shorts Griff, especially not one of you. Burrow looks you both up and down, sizing up your combined threat. Ah, get out of here. The both of you. You ain't worth the sweat of my brow anyhow. The elf smiles and bows to you in thanks. Follow me, before more of them trouble us. There is a safe place. Pifan rolls his sleeves back down. He nods at you, the shadow of a smile on his lips. Good work there. Good work. I can tell you've got chops. Say, you were on the ship here with me, weren't you? He stretches out one rough hand to shake yours. He grips your hand tight as a vice and shakes it, hard. Say, you don't look all that busy now that we're safely on dry land. I could use someone to watch my back. And it looks like you could use someone to watch yours. I've just got a small errand to run. And then I'll be looking to get the hell out of here while I've still got a neck to collar. How about we stick together until we get out of this place? the usual way. Haphazard, terrifying, and drenched in blood. Haven't quite worked out the details yet, but I'll wager it'll be no worse than what'll happen if we stay put. Two heads are better than one, and when push comes to shove, four fists are better than two, right? He grins, sharp teeth glittering in the midday sun. So, before we hit the road, it's best if we decide battle strategies up front. Should keep more of our blood in. Survival's my main priority. I'll use every trick in the book to keep us alive. But if a wayfarer's not what you're after, I've got other skills. What do you need? Can do. Onwards. He scans the horizon for threats with one green eye, then nods back at you. Right you are. Lead the way. Amidst a crowd of screws, bolts, and scraps of metal, the woman is manipulating a glove-like contraption fitted with five long metal skewers. She doesn't look up as you approach. And what you after? I ain't. Just seeing how it's made. She's clever, Dallas. Made these herself. 
for those bodyguards of hers. Boy, they're sharp. She looks up. You looking to buy something? Nothing of mine needs testing. Pay or walk, just don't waste any more of my time.
The woman looks up. What do you need? By all means, get an eyeful. I'd like to let one of them cross your path. Poor kitty. I salute you, puss. The Magister stares at the ground, unaware of your presence. With a start, she looks up and realizes someone is standing right beside her. Her eyes meet yours. She doesn't blink. The Divine is dead. The Bishop is all we have left. This isn't some thought experiment, you know. This is real. The Void Woken are here, and only a Divine can send them back. Lucian is gone. We are alone. And unless Bishop Alexander ascends... Her voice trails to silence, and she resumes staring at the ground, lost deeply in thought. I do wish Alexander would ascend sooner rather than later. 
They say his powers are not developing as they should. They blame the Void Woken. But we need his powers to develop so that he may banish the Void Woken. It's quite the pickle. I wish it every night. More than anything. Hmm? Oh, yes. Only a week or two before, well, you know. I wanted to serve him more than anything. But who didn't then? He was driving the Black Ring back, soon to rout them entirely. I put my faith in the bishop. Reminds me of his father. And what he said has been true. Wherever there are sorcerers, Void Woken strike. Reprieve from the din outside. The girl's eyes are covered, but she turns as you approach. She smiles as though she recognizes you, though she couldn't have seen your face. Ah, hello. I'm very sorry to see the thing inside. Is it becoming stronger I see it before my eyes this case is dangerous he doesn't want you to know he doesn't want you to hear its name something stirs within your heart begins to race I can tell you, though. The elf visibly shudders and suddenly starts to sweat. There's no time. It is... it is angry now. You need to stop it. Now. Suddenly, your spirit shrinks away in terror. The thing looms. Your hands are suddenly desperate to rip the young elf apart. You want her skin under your nails, her blood in your mouth. You can't stop it. The voice is too loud. The pull is too strong. You lunge at the elf, desperate to destroy her. We must hurt you if you hurt us, Losa. It is the only way to wake you up. Do you hear me? Please, you must subdue. Hurt her to save her. It's the only way. The thing within is right. Her cold corpse will make you whole again. You must weaken her to help her.
Your muscles ache. They've been tensed into tight knots. As they relax, you have to catch yourself from falling to your knees. A wave of relief floods over you, followed by a sharp headache. You spot her corpse. Deep silence echoes within. Where were you just now? Lost inside, lost deep inside. The thing was in control. It held your spirit by the throat. You couldn't speak, you couldn't act. You're you again, for now. But your body and soul ache terribly. With that thing inside her, no one is safe at her side. It isn't Loser I'm traveling with, but whatever is lurking within. Ifan looks stricken. Jaw clenched tightly as he looks at what remains of the elf. He won't meet your eye. Elodie is dead. After we saved her from the bullies at the front gate. I'd hoped she wouldn't be returning her memories to the soil just yet. I do too. But there's nothing we can do about it now, is there? Ifan is silent for a long spell. He finally turns to you with a slow nod, a closed look in his eyes. You pray if it gives you solace. Action means more to me. Speaking of, let's move. That elf didn't have to die. She harmed nobody. That I know. I don't blame you. But the fact remains, she is dead. For no reason.
I feel uneasy here.
quite right. Do seek my counsel. I highly recommend it. dog looks up at you but doesn't lift his graying head from his paws. He heaves a heavy sigh. The tip of his tail starts to wag. I'm... I'm Buddy. It's... it's no use anyway. The dog tentatively sniffs the offering, then grabs it between its teeth and swallows it. You're... you're nice. Emmy would have... Emmy would have loved you. She was my mate for the last seven, carried the two, plus fifty... five years! The Magisters, they took her. Hey, let me show you something. Oh, hey, hey! I thought you might be Emmy. It's, it's nice to see you. Key? What key? Oh, the key! The Magister who took Emmy dropped it when he was walking away. Did someone say Emmy? Oh, Emmy. If you find out where it leads, if you see Emmy, tell her I miss her. I think I love you. Not too far from here, but she was taken by a guy in a white robe who smelled horrible. Like lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of dogs. And also a little like... Like dead people. He dragged her to the big castle just there. I'm so worried about her. Good find. Oh. What do you think of messing with Griff's brutes, anyhow? Out my face, or I'll, I'll punch you like... He smacks your hand away, refusing the potion. You're trying to kill me, ain't you? Git! Git! Those bleeding fools think... think they run the place. But... but I showed them. You trap. Less you want what I what I gave them. Ralvo and his stupid cards. Get your ugly mug out of here. Frightfully busy at the moment, love. 
haven't got any liquor on hand, have you? This fella could use a little comfort. Wouldn't be a proper healer if I didn't. Go on. All the...